Okay, so one of the things that we noticed when we were looking at the class A example from the last lecture was that limiting the voltage swing causes the need for a very small optimum resistance, R opt, and hence it requires more current through the device. In fact, increasing the device current reduces the transistor's output impedance even more because we must increase the width of the transistor to achieve the higher current through the device. So here we have a simple amplifier that has an output resistance, little r sub o, and we have a matching network that's transforming 50 ohms to an impedance r opt. And so we see immediately that we have a current division at the drain of the transistor. So this current division is due to the finite output resistance of the transistor, and it's non-ideal. So we get into a little bit of a feedback loop problem where reducing our opt requires more current from the device. More current required from the device means we need a wider device. The wider device reduces the output resistance of the transistor and makes our current division worse. And at some point we get to a place where we can't make the device any wider and still increase the output power. The current division that happens at the drain causes a hit on the efficiency at the drain. And I'm going to label this as eta divider or, eta, or the drain efficiency due to current division. And it's just the ratio of our current division squared. So we can see for an ideal device where R0 was equal to infinity, then the current division would be 100%. Uh, in other words, the efficiency from the current division would be 100%. Now this adds another factor into the efficiency of our power amplifier. And in general, the efficiency of a power amplifier can be broken down into several constraints. So the total efficiency, or the total drain efficiency of the power amplifier is the product of the topology's efficiency, the efficiency of the current division at the output and any efficiency uh, loss due to matches in the due to losses in the matching network. For the class APA, we remember that the topology efficiency was 50%. So what we're looking at right now is how do we improve this eta division term? How do we and, and we do that by increasing R naught. So what's one common way that we know to increase R naught? Well, maybe the simplest thing to do is to use a cast code. So here in the drawing, we've drawn a simple cast code where we've just stacked two devices together instead of having a single device. So here with the cast code, what we're going to do is stack devices to distribute the drain to source voltage, which allows us to use a higher supply voltage, BDD. And it also increases the output resistance, effective output resistance of the transistor R0 to a higher value. Two things come from this, one positive and one negative. The first is that R op can be increased because the supply voltage VDD can be higher than it would be for the single transistor case. The second thing that's a drawback is that the knee voltage VNE increases because we have now have two transistors that we need to keep in saturation. One might ask, could we add another transistor to the stack and would it improve the performance? And indeed we can uh, continue to stack transistors uh, to a point and it will increase the output resistance, but it's also increasing the knee voltage. And there comes a point where there's a diminishing return in the value of stacking. So how do we design the Cascode PA? Well, let's start from our fundamental equations for output power. Our saturated output power is more or less given by our maximum voltage swing times our maximum current. Our maximum voltage swing is given by the supply voltage minus two times the overdrive voltage. This value here is our knee voltage, two times VOV. And we can find VOV and IMAX from our fundamental uh, equations uh, for uh, a MOS transistor. So we have that our maximum current is given by mu C ox over two times W over L times VDD minus VTH 
uh, quantity squared. And we can find our overdrive voltage as 2 times I max divided by mu C ox times W over L. Now we're going to substitute equations 3 and 2 back into equation 1, and we can find a W over L that would satisfy the required output. Now it's important to note that right now we're not accounting for losses in the matching network or the current division yet. And so it's important that when we go through this process, we might need to add a bit of a, of a correction factor uh, just to anticipate what those losses might be. The R op that we need from our impedance matching network is approximately equal to V max over I max. So this is a fairly good starting point uh, and it will get us a, a reasonable performance in a power amplifier in a first pass, uh, but it's based on a lot of simplifying assumptions. And our solution uh, to fix these simplifying assumptions is to use what we call a load pole uh, simulation. So our load pole simulation, we're going to add a few variable elements to the load. We're going to add a variable transmission line, maybe a variable reactance, and a variable resistance. So we're going to sweep the load impedance and we're going to sweep the electric length. And what this allows us to do is to present different impedances to the drain of the transistor. And we're going to monitor the impedance that the drain of the transistor sees as we do this sweep. And we're also going to monitor the output power efficiency and gain of the transistor. And as we do this, we're going to get contours for different optimum termination impedances for the efficiency so we have these efficiency contours here, and we might also get contours for output power, and we might even have contours for gain. These contours are gonna tell us at any of the impedances on one of these contours, we would achieve uh, maybe a constant power added efficiency or maybe a constant output power, and it's also gonna give us an optimum point for output power and efficiency. So our Z opt for efficiency would be the R plus JX, at the peak efficiency point, and our Z-op for P-out would be the R plus JX at the peak uh, P-sat point. Generally, we have to pick a combination of the two of these where we're not necessarily picking the peak P-out in order to favor efficiency, or we might be uh, needing to pick the peak P-out and give away some efficiency. Now, we should note that you can do this at the source as well, so we can find the source impedances that provide us uh, better performance. And we can also do this on the bench top with very expensive equipment. So this will stop this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to look at improving the efficiency by changing the bias point of the power amplifier, or the next part of this lecture, I should say.